Before we begin this video, I just want to let y'all know, Barrio Tails hoodies are now available. Five each color, small through double XL, red, black, purple, blue, and orange. Only $25 free shipping. Don't just look at it, wear it. First name, last name, mailing address, shirt size, the color. The cash app and PayPal are how you can reach me. Shirts are also available still. Welcome back for another video. Today's video will be about MS-13 versus Norteños. MS-13 has a presence in San Francisco who beats with Norteños. And in this incident involves tragedy that is all too common. On July 30th, 2008, the father of MS-13 gang member Pistolito was shot by a member of the Norteños. And some MS-13 members quickly met to plot revenge. The MS-13 members who met included Ronnie Aguilera and Marlon Rivera, Roberto Acosta, Cesar Alvarado, Walter Chinchilla, and of course, Pistolito. Pistolito's father was shot during a confrontation with rivals who sold fake green cards in the Mission District. When MS-13 gang members learned that Pistolito's father had been shot, they attributed the shooting to Norteños and planned to retaliate. Another MS-13 member, Jose Cheeky Spinal, phoned Rivera and told him to get ready as other gang members would come by to pick them up. Early the next morning, July 31st, at approximately 1.15, 14-year-old Yvonne Miranda left his house to meet his 17-year-old friend, Natalie Linares, telling his father he was going to return Linares' iPod. Miranda met Linares and her friend Alejandro Flores at the intersection of Persia Avenue and Lisbon Street at about 1.30 a.m. Miranda had red shoelaces in his sneakers, the color associated with the Norteños. The three of them walked toward Linares' house. When Linares noticed four men approaching, the men walked past them at first, then turned back and headed toward them. Flores recognized one of the four men as Rivera, who went to the same school as he and his companions. Flores noticed a fifth man who seemed to be texting or calling someone. When the four approached, they produced knives. One of them said, check them and asked whether Miranda and the others had iPods or phones, which they then took. Two of the men held knives against Flores, one of whom flashed to MS-13 gang sign. Two others, including Rivera, pointed knives at Miranda, who broke free and ran pursued by two gang members. Moments later, Linares and Flores saw Miranda on the ground, stabbed in the chest, neck, arm, and back. Miranda was taken to San Francisco General Hospital, where he died from his stab wounds. The iPod he brought to the scene was never recovered. A little after 1.30 a.m., Espanal called Rivera and asked him, what's up? Rivera said, a little fish had fallen, that long-haired little guy from school. Yvonne, dude. On July 31st, the day of the murder, Aguilera contacted Acosta, a fellow gang member who was also a tattoo artist, told him about the murder, said that he and Rivera had earned gang tattoos for the murder, and asked him to tattoo them. Acosta did that and much more. Acosta was a confidential informant who had for some three years been working with the Department of Homeland Security in a relationship with agent John Moore. Using a concealed digital recorder provided to him by the DHS, Acosta recorded conversations with MS-13 gang members. Acosta recorded conversations with MS-13 gang members Aguilera and Rivera regarding the murder of Miranda. Those recordings and their translations became significant pieces of evidence at trial. Both of the recordings were in Spanish and were played as segments for the jury, while Acosta, through an interpreter, testified to their content and identified the various speakers. Ronnie Aguilera and Marlon Rivera, both members of MS-13, were convicted of six felonies, including first-degree murder and gang allegations. Rivera was sentenced to 36 years to life. Aguilera was sentenced to 35 years to life.